Hey guys, welcome back. Today's episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make a Wi-Fi jammer for around $5. Now before I get into this episode, um, using this kind of thing in public is illegal in most, if not all, countries or states, whatever. Um, so definitely check that out before you use it in public. I would not recommend it because it's going to annoy a lot of people. Um, basically, it's something cool that you can mess around with as long as you're doing it on your own network or you have permission. So I'm not responsible for any trouble or anything that you get into uh, because of using this. But anyway, with that out of the way, I'm going to get into it. So the name of this uh, device, it's called a Node MCU. So I'm on the, the manufacturer's web page here. So if you've ever heard of what um, of an Arduino, it's basically a small computer um, on a very small uh, little circuit board, looks like this, and basically you can flash different programs onto it so that it does different things. Now this specific one, the Node MCU, um, one of their one of their uh, products or one of their little boards has a Wi-Fi module, and obviously we're going to need that um, for this to work. So it's got a couple of examples for different um, firmware software that you can flash onto it. Um, but the specific one that we're going to be needing to flash um, won't be on here. It's a user-made one. But before we do that, I'll show you where you can actually buy this. Um, so the easiest way to probably get them is off eBay. I'm pretty sure you can get them off AliExpress and probably diff other online shopping sites. I haven't had a look. Um, this one, this is the one that I bought, I think, or it might have been from a different seller. Uh, but this is nine dollars AU, which is about five US dollars. Um, and basically, yeah, uh, actually, they're not, not they're five US dollars. Sorry, if you buy them from China or one of those other Asian countries, which takes like five years to ship. Um, so that's the one that I got. So it cost me five dollars. If you're wanting to get a local one like this, that'll arrive really soon. Um, then you'll pay a couple dollars more, but something like this, um, this is the exact product here. When I'll actually, I'll leave a link down in the description below to um, to different ones that you can buy, depending on where you live and how much you're wanting to spend. Okay, so once you've purchased that and everything, um, or even if you want to download the software now to get ready for it, first thing you're going to want to do is Google search CP1202 driver. Now that's the chipset name that's on the Node MCU, CP2102, sorry, not 1202. Um, you're going to want to Google search that, and then you're going to want to click on this one from Silicon Labs. Now here you're going to get the different drivers. You're going to get download VCP and download VCP with serial enumeration. I'm not too sure what the serial enumeration means. This is the one I, download, I downloaded here, uh, the download VCP, and that'll just install the drivers so that it's picked up um, on your computer. So download that for whichever version of Windows you're running. I'm guessing most people will be downloading this top one here for 7, 8, 8.1 and Windows 10, but if not, they've got them for older versions of Windows as well, as well as, a, as, well as Linux, um, OS X, and even Android as well. So once you've downloaded that installed the driver, you're going to want to Google search or use whatever uh, internet browser you use, search GitHub, uh, Node, not nor node MCU D off um, and then hit enter and then it should come up as the top result here now I will say that I don't take any rights or anything for uh, coding this this was all done by someone else um, so definitely check them out it's space hun I think that's how you say it um, he designed and coded all of this so all credit goes to him um, for that. So it has a little uh, kind of introduction and tutorial here so go ahead and read that if you want to but if you want to just get straight into it you want to scroll down until you see uploading the bin file. So click on that and then it's going to tell you. So note here it says the 4 512 kilobyte version won't have the full Mac vendor list. Now the different ver there are different versions of the specific Node MCU um, there are some very, very cheap ones, which will be the 512 kilobyte or half a megabyte version. However, most of them will be this 4 megabyte version. That's the one that I've got, and that's the one that I'll make sure I leave a link to down um, in, description, in the description below. 
So it's got two links here, download the current release and then also node MCU Flasher. So this here is the software that you're going to be flashing um, onto the actual node MCU. So you're going to click this top one here, ESP8266 deauthor 1 megabyte.bin. So that's the one that you're going to want to download. That's going to download in the background. And then this one here, the second link we clicked on, this is the program that you use to flash the software onto it. So you need to make sure uh, that you download the 32-bit version if your computer has a 32-bit OS or 64-bit if you have 64-bit. I have 64-bit, so I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to download ESP to ESP8266 Flasher uh, .exe, and that's the 64-bit version. So now once you've done all that, we can close that down, hop over into Downloads, and you'll see that we have these two files here. So we have the, the Flash software, which looks like this. Um, so I haven't connected my Node MCU yet, but so it'll look like this, and it's got all configuration in advanced, and then we've got the bin file that we're going to be flashing onto it. Okay, so we've got the Node MCU here. It'll probably come with some foam on the bottom. You can leave that on if you want to. It doesn't really matter. It saves you from stabbing your fingers on the pins on the bottom. But as you can see there, it uses a micro USB port. And that is for power. And that's also, it'll be used, sorry, as a data point when we're flashing uh, the firmware across onto this. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to plug that in to your computer. Um, the computer that you're going to be flashing the firmware on. Once you've done that, now we can move back onto the computer and flash uh, the software. Okay, so we've done that. Now let's launch ESP8266flasher.exe. This is the program that we're using to flash the software across. So now you need to make sure that it is registering here under the word COM port. Now, um, it might not be COM4, it might be COM1, COM9, any range of other numbers. There might even be multiple ones. But what you want to do is you want to make sure that that selected, that selected whichever one is yours. Um, if they're multiple, just keep trying until it, uh, until it works, I guess. Um, so under config, you want to press the little cog icon and navigate to where that bin file is. And then we're going to click open. So once we've done that, we're going to go to advanced and then set these various settings here. So we're going to leave the board rate at that. Flash size is 4 megabytes. Uh, flash speed, we're going to set that to 80 megahertz. And SPI mode, we'll leave that on DIO. So now, once we've done all that, we're going to click the flash button. Um, and you'll notice that a blue light starts flashing um, on, on the Node MCU. And it's going to start... Um, writing this file onto the node MCU. So this could take this will probably take about 30 seconds to a minute depending on your computer. So just leave that um, until it's done. Okay, so now that that's done, you're going to see a little green tick down in the bottom left hand corner, which means that it has successfully flashed. So we can go ahead and close that, we'll close that, and then you're going to want to open up a browser that you will need in a second. So now you're going to want to disconnect the Node MCU from your computer so that it loses power, and then reconnect it again. So now that you've done that, bear in mind your computer needs to have Wi Fi because we need to connect. Um, to that specific network that is um, that that node MCU is putting out so that we can configure it. So I've already configured it. This is mine here. So I'm going to connect to it. Um, it will actually be called PWNED. That's the name of the network, and the password is dauthor. I will leave that information um, in the description down below. So once you've connected that, you're going to want to go to your URL bar and type in the address 192.168. 4.1 and hit enter now it's going to come up with a warning page these are the things that I talked about um, before so go ahead and read that uh, if you really want to so you're going to click I've understood and read it so now we've got our various settings and everything here so that is my current password for um, that I'm going to blur that out 
Um, but yeah, so you can set that to whatever you want to. You can change, uh, use LED, LED pin, etc., timeout, all that kind of stuff. Um, I've left that all at stock. I haven't bothered to change that. Then we've got our various different attacks. So we've got the deauthentication attack. Uh, and basically what that does is it sends what's called deauthentication packets um, to the network that you've chosen. Now, these deauthentication de packets, they request, they basically they tell the network um, to ask all of its connected devices um, to connect again, basically. And so this device is it's spamming that, that network with these deauthentication packets. So the devices disconnect, and before they have time to reconnect again, they're getting asked to disconnect again. That's basically how it works, so they're not going to be able to connect to the network. We've also got Beacon, um, and you can set up fake networks. So, we can type in fake network, and then we can choose how many of these we want. You can have up to 48, um, and basically when someone goes into their Wi-Fi list, they're going to see 48 networks. They won't be able to connect to any of them, but in the next episode, I'm going to be showing you um, how to actually use some of these. So now we've got scan for Wi-Fi stations. You don't really need to bother about that. The main thing is AP or access points. So we're going to hit scan. And now this is going to scan for Wi-Fi network. So we've got two networks here. So let's use this network, which is my network. Um, so we're going to select that. It tells you what type of encryption it uses, um, et cetera, et cetera. So once you've clicked select, then you're going to go to attacks. And here it says status ready. So now you can start any of these attacks. Um, so anyway, I'm going to end it off there. I'll leave the rest for next episode where I'll show you um, how to actually use it and the effects, what it seems, what it looks like um, and what it'll do to your devices and even some limitations or ways that you can protect against this kind of thing for happening. So as always guys, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.